if we take a look over here, you can see when I click on this switch, it's gonna open up my sample notes box. And what we want to focus on now is this launch box over here. And this is where our file actions will be located. So take a look at this. You can see that this is a 16 bar loop. So for example, if I move this up to 16, I can also click and type it in. This is saying in 16 bars, I can open this up and I can make this clip do any of these following actions after this clip is playing for 16 bars. I can make the clip stop, play again, or in this case, I can make the clip play the next clip below after 16 bars. So watch what happens if I click next. So when I launch the clip, you can see that this clip is actually already blinking because it's getting ready to play after this clip plays for 16 bars. So when it gets to the end of the 16 bars, it'll automatically play this clip. See, I didn't even launch clip A, but it automatically played after the intro clip. And now alongside the intro clip automatically jumping to the clip titled A, this clip is now automatically looping. And you can see how convenient this would be in a live set. Although some people may be asking why you would do this. Like why wouldn't you simply play the intro into the following clip with one clip? And here's the reason for this. Rather than Ableton automatically playing a set for me with follow actions, this actually gives me more freedom and options to perform with the music as I can now jump between these parts individually whenever I want, rather than having to wait for the section to play through. And you'll notice that whenever I click on the intro clip, it restarts the follow action. So if I launch the clip and then launch it again, it will take 16 bars from the last time I launched the clip to move into the next part. So you have the freedom to launch these clips as many times as you'd like before the song plays into the following section. And this is what I enjoy about follow actions. Rather than using them to have Ableton perform for me automatically, I can use them to allow myself to perform more freely within the tunes, having Ableton work with one portion of the set while I perform with another. And if you're interested in the other follow actions, these can be useful as well, as you can stop the clip, play the clip again, move to the following clip as we just saw, move to the previous clip above it. If you have a group of clips like this, it will jump to the first clip, you can jump to the last clip, or you can have the following clip launch be completely random. So you can see there's a lot of possibilities to incorporate follow actions into your live DJ sets. Where in this video, we're gonna focus on the next follow action option. Although you're free to use whichever ones you like. Also noting, you'll see that there's another follow action over here. And this actually gives you an option to randomize or bring a chance of two different follow actions possibly happening. So for example, as I turn this up, it raises the chance level that it'll use this follow action. So one zero means it will always play the left one and never play the right one. And if I do one one, there's a 50% chance it'll go down a clip or jump to a random clip. So you get to choose the ratio of the chance of these being applied to your clip. Although for me personally in this setup, I rather know exactly what's going to happen. So I'm gonna turn this off and put it to one and zero. You know, there's a time and place where I'd like things to happen randomly in a live set, but for this case, during a live DJ set where I want to play things smoothly and clean, I'd rather not have random clips launching. If you do want that, go for it, but I'll keep this flowing to the next clip for now. 